tomatoes, aubergine, eggplant, meat, a bit of onions, and we're going to scatter the rice on top. Now we wait. Is it really just a waiting game? Isn't life just a waiting game? We've got to call the show Go Deep with Judy <laughs> Teller. This is the Malube episode. Need I even say anymore? You all knew it was gonna happen because you cannot go a month in a Palestinian household without eating it at least once, maybe more like 17 times. But for this very special episode of Turning Tables, Palestinian Cooking with a Twist, I'll be joined by my dear, dear friend and chef extraordinaire from the UK, Judy Kella herself, author of the world famous cookbook, Palestine on a Plate. She taught us how aubergines or eggplants can be fried to perfection to get just the right flavor, and how to check the heat of oil with a wooden spoon. Um, Matlube is just delightful, isn't it? Oh, she's right, my British accent's pretty bad. I feel like it's on par with Dick Van Dyke, but anyway, I digress. Um, in all seriousness, this episode was so fun to shoot, and I know that after this, you too will learn, or will have learned, something new about one of Palestine's most popular dishes. Enjoy. Who taught you how to make malube? Nadia, my mom. She taught me how to make malube. Although she makes it differently to me, I can still never make it the same as she does, even though I follow all the steps. But it turns out good. That's all. It's that funny. Happened. It's funny you say that. A lot of the chefs I spoke to kind of talked about how you know everyone makes it slightly differently, no matter how much you try to follow your your mom's <laughs> recipe <laughs> somehow it's always a little bit more complicated with them or they'll say like not as specific but um so so is there a time of year you make it or you just make it when you feel a certain way or is it like a it's all about feelings ahmed just whenever i feel like something if i have a thought and it reminds me of something i'll cook that particular dish and my mom, all of us, that's how we feel. Like if I think of my sister and I miss her, I'll make Yalanji. My brother, we make him Nazlet Betinjan. Uh, Aunt Lamia, I miss my mom when she travels. I make Luchia almost every other night. I mean, it's uh, all just kind of connection and feeling like they're around you, even though they're not. Um, so Matlube comes up whenever. What's the first thing you do when you make Matlube? Get the meat on. So we use lamb neck, which is, um, really delicious it's a long strip thin of meat and it's got really nice fat running through it all this sort of disappears and dissolves while you're cooking it making the meat so tender and we cut it into chunks um, so it's easier to eat and obviously it cooks faster if it's in pieces and we season it very simply with cardamom pods and onion and salt and water and then that water is used to cook them at lube and so you get the flavor of the meat in there as well uh so that's what we start with first there so i'm just gonna cut off the top and bottom of my onion cut it in half and in quarters like this i keep the skin on and i even throw in the bottoms in here because the onion skin is full of vitamins and just delicious stuff so you know why throw that away and also it colors the broth and mm, and i put in cardamom pods in here and a splash of um, sunflower oil or any, you know, non-scented oil. This helps the onion caramelize a little bit and get the cardamom pods just aroma going through before we add the water. So we want to flavor the base and then add the lahmi. Really, all you want to do is just let the onions and cardamom pods just move around for about a minute. Just to, You'll start to smell the sweetness of the onion and the smell of the cardamom is just the best. A smell for me ever and then all you want to do is just take your meat which I've got here that I cut and I'm going to put it into the pot and then I'm going to cover it with water and we're going to leave it salted in the background uh, until we That's eat it. That's lamb, a certain type of lamb? Yeah, lamb neck. I'm just going to add the water, salt and I'm going to put it on the side because it's making a lot of noise. And you want to cover it with about two inches of water because that broth, like I said, we're going to use it for the for the matluba. So you don't want to just cover it by a centimeter and then have nothing left. So salt, always try to use the best salt you've got. Please, none of this table salt rubbish. Because the next thing we're going to do 
is the aubergine, AKA the eggplant. We cut it into chunks because we like to have these bits sort of showing up. And a lot of people kind of cover the bottom of the matluba with eggplant going this way. We don't do that. This is not my mom's speciality and also just makes things so much longer and time consuming. So we just do simple. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to have some strips. This keeps the aubergine intact without it sort of flaking apart. And also you want some of the skin flavor because that's where all the good stuff is, right? Delicious. So it's like this. And then you want to just cut the aubergine lengthways and then like this again and then cut it into one inch chunks so you want to go down the center and then down the center again again you have to also check and see how big your aubergine is or eggplant and I make mean, a call on how big you want each chunk to be i'm going to do them into about inch thickness and this is going to get Fried. So I'm just going to show you the size of them like this. So I've cut them like that. So you see they're half striped, half not. Um, and you want to get a pan on, again, with an unflavored oil, like sunflower oil, um, and get the pan on a really high heat. You don't want to put, and you want to put a lot of oil. Doesn't mean you're going to use all the oil. You just don't want to put a tiny bit of oil and then it dries out and the aubergine sticks to the oil and it becomes soggy. Mm. The oil has to be sizzling hot. If you put aubergine or anything into oil that's sort of lukewarm, you're gonna just end up with this most disgusting, soggy, oil-drenched vegetable, which defeats the whole point of what you're trying to do, is to create a crisp brown color. And the best way to know if something's um, hot enough is to use a wooden stick or the back end of a spoon. I'll show you when the oil is hot enough. And then if, if there's sizzling bubbles coming up the side of your spoon, wooden spoon, not metal spoon, it means your oil is hot enough. Doing the next step. And the sizzling oil in the uh, spoon, perfect. I'm just going to dunk in my aubergines and let them kind of do their thing. Don't overcrowd the pan uh, because it just brings the heat down completely. What about Palestinian cuisine makes it so special to you? Ahmed, this is such a hard question to ask because... Well, that's why they what, pay me the big bucks. What now. isn't special about it? It's delicious. It's varied. It crosses like from the north of Palestine to the coast where you have much heavier meals and then to the sunshine of fish and dega and shatta and uh, chilies. And then you go to the kubbes and the... Uh, there's so many things. I just sometimes think it's not possible that one country can have so many dishes from Hindbe to the Sada to the Isha cake, which is the black sesame seed cake. I mean, I was just talking to a reporter the other day in, for Gulf News, and we were talking about like lost recipes. Um, and they were lost, but they're coming back and it's special. What? We have to keep bringing things back because they shouldn't die because those generations have gone, right? It's, uh, we are the voices of people who are no longer here and we have to keep making it special keep bringing bringing it to highlight that you know it's interesting that you you t you're talking about loss and, and and kind of filling the void and the gap i mean obviously for many of us food is about filling our bellies but also filling our souls and making us feel yeah. full when we might feel empty and i think so much um of palestinian identity is mired in loss and a sense of nostalgia and emptiness. So I don't know if I'm grasping at straws, but no, is maybe not. part of what makes it so special that like, not only does it fill your stomach, but it really fills, at least for me, like when I eat my mom's food, even your food, just my loved one's food, and especially Palestinian dishes, I feel better. I, feel, I mean, that's with all food, but I feel kind of like a more full way of looking at the Palestinian identity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we cook for memories and we cook for feelings. We cook also to pleasure our tongues and our bellies and to, to I don't know about you, but when I eat, like I said before, when I'm thinking of something, if I eat a dish like matlube, it's a dish that we eat when we're all together, like what I know and yeah. Yeah. Things yeah. That you eat together. So this is going to my mom's house later and we're going to eat it no matter what diet we're on. It doesn't matter. <laughs> just like <laughs> it's going to happen. But 
you, you want to you want to enjoy what you're cooking and even sometimes if you have like a sad memory about it it still gives you pleasure because you feel some kind of connection to a story or a moment or uh, a person and this is why i cook i mean my book is called palestine on a plate recipe uh, memories from my mother's kitchen and it's not you know a lot of people thought my mom had passed away when i had written that but it's memories from her kitchen that she remembers, not me remembering her kitchen. She, I'm remembering her remembering her kitchen, right? Well, um, and that's a beautiful way of kind of outlining like how maybe another thing that makes Palestinian cooking so special, not exclusive to Palestine, but it's really about memories being passed on from generation to generation in the absence of sometimes being able to pass on more tactile things like land yeah. and belonging uh -huh. that have been lost. This for me, I mean, I was not the most Palestinian Palestinian out there, A, because I didn't really know And much yet, about look it. at you now wearing a Palestinian sweater, Palestinian <laughs> necklace. I'm just gonna sprinkle my aubergines with some salt to take away excess fat. Tinjan, the lahme, the aubergine, the meat. So the tomatoes act as a protector on the bottom of your pot. And they also add tartness, which is like a sourness and color. So this is how we at home uh, present it. You're gonna get three tomatoes or two big ones, whatever size pot you're using. So uh, for our American audience, uh, it's tomatoes is what she's referring to. Potato. potato, potato. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut the tomatoes. Tomato, tomato. Uh, and um, you don't have to be, you know, whatever. You just do what you do. Cut them into rings or circles, whatever you wanna call that. And then we're gonna season the rice. Rice, salt, black pepper, cinnamon, a little bit of sunflower oil. This will help it stop sticking to your pot. Because this rice, unlike other rice dishes, is not a rice that you can mix around and sort of taste the liquid as much as you would if you had a right, right. everything to move. Uh, and I'm gonna be, my mom uses uh, Egyptian rice. I'm using basmati rice. Um, but it's That's my girl. But it's better. It's better with the Egyptian but isn't rice. Egyptian rice very sticky, and I feel like matlube with sticky rice is oh, a bit weird. Yeah, no, no, no. It's really good. Can you do a bit of sticky rice, a bit of basmati yeah. rice, a bit of black rice? No, not what? No, no. Stick with one. But in here, I'm just putting basmati rice. I don't know how much I'm going to put. I'm not even measuring because in my cookbook, I've done like a. Um, just small. A recipe for like 10 12 people i'm doing this for moi and my mama so i'm just gonna season with salt be generous and some black pepper i love black pepper so i'm gonna do like Me 25 too. rounds of this <laughs> you don't have to do this but again we want to really make it really nice and seasoned otherwise there's no point in eating this okay is now it okay to use all spice yeah, absolutely. You can use allspice, allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg, whatever you prefer. Got it. Um, a tad, a pinch of cinnamon, and like I said, just a splash of sunflower oil, like this. Yeah. This will help, kind of, just not stick to the pot. Now I've said that three times. I'm pretty confident it's going to stick when we flip it, but <sighs> who cares? No one's judging. And then you want to give it a little mix, like this. But make sure you mix it really well. Uh, you want to go all around. Mm. And then you want to take a little teaspoon and then obviously taste it at this point. Obviously, it's raw. And you want to just see um, if it's too salty or too this or that. Hopefully, it's not too anything and it's under seasoned or perfect. Yeah, so this is what your rice should be looking like. Nice and seasoned. Right. It's changed. Judy. And now, my friend... I'm My gonna... friend, I've got to ask you quickly, is there one particular Palestinian spice for Ma'lube? Or because you, you're being very liberal and telling us we can do whatever I want, I could use all spice. Is there like three? Every family is different. I follow my mom, who followed her mom, who followed her mom, and you know, this is how it works. And it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, carry on. And then you want to pour this in, get all the broth out. You're gonna have a bit of steam on there. Drop all this mm -hmm. in. So what we do is we put the, potato, the tomatoes in here for protection, taste, color. Then you take a tiny, tiny teaspoon, Ahmed, and you mm -hmm. just put in the little cracks so they help seal the matluba together with the rice. Mm. I don't want to go crazy. 
and don't press anything down right this is just going to inflate and grow next we're going to put the aubergine that i've salted here you can see like my lovely salt flakes we're going to put them in these go in before the meat because the meat is more expensive so we want to protect that more than anything and you know it's so good right so uh tomatoes aubergine eggplant meat a bit of onions and we're going to scatter the rice on top please do not press the rice in this will just create like a massive uh, density for the liquid to not be able to travel through and all you want to do is really gently just scatter the rice here let it fall into the little cracks okay and look at this broth Ahmed. so instead of pouring just like boring water this is your meat broth mm. with flavored mm. with the cardamom and the onion and the color comes from the onion skin as well and now you want to just pour it really gently over the rice you don't want it to kind of mix up everything get it all the way till you get to the top if you run out of this broth stock yeah just top it with some water but i don't need any because that's perfect so all you want to do is cover the malube with a plate like this so the rice stays intact and then you want to just put your temperature on uh we do not want this to boil because then the whole point of your layering is pointless right you want it to simmer this is why it takes a bit of a time to right um, to to cook it um and we just want to leave it just chilling in the background on a on a like if you're on an electric hob on a four or five if you're on gas a third of the way up um and just leave it like this now we wait is it really just a waiting game isn't life just a waiting game <laughs> Judy, we've, got, we've got to call the show go deep with judy keller <laughs> Take the plunge into the pot and the depths of your soul. You know, Judy, let's be real for a second. Sometimes uh, it's hard to be Palestinian. Did my eyeball nearly fall out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In agreement. <laughs> you know, I haven't been to Palestine. I want to go. I wasn't allowed to go. I got banned. There was like a big campaign in Israel to ban me because they said my books were anti-Semitic because I didn't... Um, acknowledge Israel or Israelis in my book well why would I because there wasn't an Israel when these I'm sorry were... I'm sorry I'm sorry just to clarify for factual purposes as a journalist because obviously we've all seen the lengths that people will go to make claims of anti-semitism when you're simply criticizing a government policy that's like you know violating human rights we yeah. know that you're saying you or your books were under some were, were people accuse is Israelis, Israel, people accused you or your books of being anti-Semitic simply because you didn't mention Jewish people or Israel? I mentioned Jewish people. I didn't mention Israel. Because obviously Jews lived in Palestine with Palestinians. Israelis did not when my grandmother was alive. So they were not acknowledged in the book because then it was no longer Palestine. So why would I... But, 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 but you're making a cookbook about Palestine. What does that have to do with... <laughs> main thing that being appropriated after our country food yeah but the food is still palestinian because you can't take away what you know best right so usually i would suggest you have a pot with two handles like this not with a handle like this but because my big pot is that one and i'm not making it for 20 people i use this so you get a plate put it on top of your pot and then you love and then you leave it and you don't do anything you just leave this here and i'm just gonna give it a little pretty bit. by the way the way you just did that was so casual like i've never seen anyone flip matlu but usually it's like and then it's like oh, get it out. just to give it a little nudge and then we just leave it i think the big mistake like i said before is that you just flip it over and you lift the lid and khalas, it's done. And then the whole thing falls apart. Guys, it will fall apart sometimes. Who cares? Wait, wait, wait. Did you, don't, don't let it, wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just saying like, this is what happens is that people rush and you don't have to. This is going to stay hot for ages. 
block because you block the bottom. It's in, a, in its pot. There's no way anything's going to escape, but it's just going to slightly cool down to set. If you lift this up right now, the heat is just going to, like a volcano, just sort of spread and break everything. And again, even if it breaks, no one cares because A, they should be thankful you made them food. B, it's going to taste delicious. And C, you're going to eat it and it's going to mush up anyway and break apart. You want to put your nuts on top. You want to put your parsley on top. You can have a side of yogurt with cucumber and mint on top. Um, just a quick recap on what we've just done. We boiled the lamb with onion and cardamom. We uh, fried the aubergine, we salted them, we cut tomatoes, we seasoned the rice with salt, pepper, cinnamon, and a little bit of oil. Then we layered everything, tomatoes first, aubergine second, lamb third, rice fourth, broth from the lamb, covered it, cooked it on a medium to low heat, and then let it sit. Then we flip the pot as it is like this, and we wait for 10, 15 minutes for it to just set, and then we serve. So this is kind of like the, the moment we've all usually been waiting for. Hey, bismillah. Bismillah. Tilt the laptop, wait. What? Oh God, this is so much pressure. OMG. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. If it breaks, it's your fault because you put me under pressure. It's my fault. Everything's my fault, okay. Isn't it always just? It, it's true. <gasps> Look at that skill. She's lifting it slowly. Wow. Masha'Allah. This is when you would put your nuts with the butter and drizzle it on top and it's just mm -hmm. fabulous. Don't stress and enjoy what you're eating. And think of Palestine and your grandmother <laughs> and your mom. Um, I want to thank you for showing me how to make matlube again. And as you said, next time I see you, hopefully in the flesh, you can put me to the test. I think I've got it down. She's giving me side eye like, mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's not that complicated. It just requires a little patience. That's what I learned and passion and pleasure. It was a pleasure being on here with you. We would be remiss if we didn't include you. So we're very happy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.